I did a series of videos on the MLS Super Draft. However, there are other drafts that take place in MLS when you're playing Football Manager. And this video is gonna look at the other drafts. I'm gonna start with the Expansion Draft. So let's look at the Major League Soccer Expansion Draft from the perspective of one of the expansion teams. When you start the game, you can choose either Nashville SC or Inter Miami. And you'll go through the 2019 season. You will not compete in MLS. There will be no games. National SC will play in the U.S. Open Cup, but will not compete in MLS. And then at the end of the year, towards the end of the calendar year in 2019, you will enter the expansion draft. And so with this video, we'll look, with this part of the video, we'll look at how that kind of works from one of the expansion side's perspectives. In this example, I've taken Nashville SC, and we are nearing the end of the 2019 season. The uh, expansion draft will be in about a month from this date that we're at. And so what I thought I would do is show you a little bit about gathering as much information as you can heading into the expansion draft. And what you're going to do as Nashville SC or as Inter Miami is you're going to select five players from a pool of players that comes from all of the other MLS teams. So what you really need is as much information about the players in MLS as you can gather. So there's a couple of things. First of all, the simple way, go to scouting. And assuming that you have set your responsibility as, as creating uh, scout assignments, you can go to create new assignment. You can just choose players, any, any, and then go to uh, competition. And you're going to look United States and scout MLS. Now I would recommend doing this much earlier in the season and I would have it ongoing throughout the year and then maybe cancel it at the end of the year. But in this example, I'm gonna just have my scout go for, for one month and I'm gonna choose Myers who is available and he will scout all of MLS and get me as much information on the players as he can. Right? And that is uh, one way to go and gather um, scouting reports on all the MLS players, you can also uh, go to the MLS screen, and we'll do that. Oops, hit the question mark. Go to the MLS um, page, and I keep pushing the wrong button. There we go. Um, uh, go to stages, and then go to supporter shield table, and you can get team reports for each team. And unfortunately, there's not a fast way to do this. You're going to have to go to get team report and then just choose um, one of your scouts to do that one way is to right click and go to get team report choose the scout uh, you can go to the team screen and get a team report this way but that does take a little longer than just doing the right click um, but this this will help you in addition to your scouting report uh, get gather some information on the players that you'll be choosing from when it comes to time for the MLS expansion draft. Here, the expansion draft is ready to begin now. And again, this is with Nashville SC. This is from the perspective of an expansion team. And you get an email the day of the expansion draft telling you that the players have been selected. And then it gives you an option to scout players. The unfortunate reality is that it's already time for the draft. And so hopefully, You've already been scouting these players throughout your the year that you've been waiting to join the league. But you will get some reports, you'll get some information um, when you when you do the scout players, but you don't get you only really get the uh, scout reports on the players that your scout believes might be worth taking a look at. So as the Nashville SE or Inter Miami, one of the expansion teams, the way it's kind of structured, each team in MLS has uh, the option to make players unavailable right so each team has 11 players so of the 24 mls teams each team chooses 11 players that you will not have access to they are they are unavailable for you all the rest of the players though will be in the expansion draft and so let's go in and take a look at what we've got so these are the players you can go down to your scout and Again, uh, I, with this, I've only been scouting for about a month, so I'm not going to have a full um, scouting knowledge of players. You can see only two guys are showing up. So um, it really pays to do more scouting throughout the year 
that you were waiting to join the league. But uh, this here you see players that are available. Um, and your scout's recommendation. So as the expansion team, as you're choosing these players, one thing you do have to remember is that you're only going to be able to choose one player from each team. So, for example, Danilo Silva, he plays for, well, he's a free agent. Who did he last play for? So he last played for LF, LAFC. If I drafted Silva, that means that no other LAFC players would be available. Let's see if it has a club. It lists the club that they were that they were from before they were put onto the. Oh, yeah, I think I created. Yeah, I created this to help with. Yeah, so the last, so the last club, right? So for, uh, here we, we'll just do it like this. So you've got these players from Vancouver. If I was to draft uh, Cornelius, that would mean that all of these other players from Vancouver would be unavailable. So I could not draft Pedrahita, Eric Dick, uh, Kripo, uh, Owusu, all those players would be unavailable. You can only draft one from each. Now, that's true of Miami, too. So if Miami, which they have the first pick, so let's see who they choose. They picked Chicharito, of course. Who? Would, why would they leave Chicharito available? Uh, Chicharito last played for the Galaxy, which I believe would mean, let's see if we can... Um, yeah, Chicharito last played for the Galaxy, which means that I could not draft uh, Kleishnan if I wanted to. Right, the draft player option is not there. Couldn't draft Von Stieg. Also not available. That's because Chicharito was selected from the Galaxy. So the, you can't. The idea here is they don't want the expansion teams to raid a single club. Right now, I could go to Houston and choose one of their players. I could get Funmayor. I could get Salazar. I could get McLaughlin. But if I did none of those other players would be available in later rounds. So that's an important thing to remember because you kind of have to be strategic about that, knowing that you're not going to be able to draft two players from the same team. And so, but you do, this is a, the expansion draft is a great way to improve your squad as you're picking from, obviously teams are going to protect their best players, generally speaking. That means that you're probably not going to get an elite world beater, although Chicharito is one, probably one of the better players in MLS. So uh, that just shows you that there is talent available in the expansion draft. So it does pay off to take it seriously. It does pay off that year you're waiting to join the league to scout these guys so that when you go into the expansion draft, you have a better idea of what you're getting. In this case, what you're looking at here, I did not scout the way I should have and so I don't have a great knowledge of the players that I'm looking at. Now let's look at the expansion draft from the perspective of one of the existing MLS teams. Now obviously you are not going to be selecting players in the expansion draft. Instead what you're going to be doing is choosing to protect players from being selected. And the as we've said before, I believe the purpose of the expansion draft is to allow the expansion teams to pick from the league of player, I'm sorry, the pool of players already in the league from all the other teams just to try and help them build their squad a little bit. But they don't want the expansion teams to just choose whoever they want. They do limit it so as to not cripple the teams that exist. So what they do is they allow all the existing MLS teams to choose 12 players to protect from being selected. They also make sure that each team can only lose a maximum of one player. So if you are a team already in MLS when the expansion draft occurs, you will only lose one player. And they cannot choose two, three, four, five players from your team. And again, that's to prevent your team from you know, having all of your best players taken. So if you're a team in MLS, expansion drafts coming up, you are going to have this email in your box right, where it asks you to protect 12 players. 
It also tells you injured players are automatically registered. They cannot be waived while injured. And then generation Adidas players who were not set to graduate at the end of the season will be protected. And then homegrown players will also automatically be protected. So when you click on respond, it's going to already have everybody protected, which you can't do, obviously. And it tells you up here on in the top here, it says there's maximum team size of 12 players to protect. So what I just do is I, I clear everyone. And even after you do that, you'll see that there are some players that are automatically protected. For example, here I have, I see that Eric McHugh is protected. Why is that? Well, that's because he is a homegrown player. He, he was signed from the Houston Dynamo Academy. And the same is true of um, Marcelo Palomino. So they are both protected automatically from being drafted in the expansion draft. Also, if I had a Generation Adidas player, which I don't, but if I did, he would also automatically be protected. Uh, I am also required to protect a minimum of three internationals. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why that rule exists. I guess just to make sure I'm not trying to offload guys to keep my uh, to open up some international slots um, but I have to make sure that I protect at least three internationals that's usually easy because usually you are trying to protect your best players so then you you choose the 12 that's going to be up to you how do you value your players do you are you looking to just protect your best 12 is there a certain position that you're wanting to make sure that you protect are you worried about contract length, which you can see that over here? They do give you that field in the, uh, in the, the view. Um, are you going to go look at the other teams? Maybe you look at Nashville SC and Inter Miami and you look at their squads. Uh, is there a, a position that you're afraid they're going to be targeting? Uh, how you value the players and from that value, the way you choose your 12, that's going to be up to you. Um, Maybe age plays in to the decision. I that's you know again that's going to be up to you. For example, I uh, Bonyek Garcia. I like Bonyek, but he is 35, 36. Where is the age there? 35 years old. So uh, I'm not going to protect him. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and just pick 12 that I want to try and keep. Um, and it seems kind of random, but I promise it's not. Actually, I'm going to leave Ramirez. Uh, he, I feel like he's been underperforming. Maybe personality plays into it. You're trying to get rid of some of the bad personalities from your squad. Um, and let's protect Valentin. All right, so I've picked my 12, and I'll sort it here. So none of these guys are going to be picked they cannot be picked they are protected one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then the two that were automatically protected so a total of 14 players are safe that means these guys up here are exposed inter miami or nashville can pick any one of these players however only one of those players can they select anyone else or if they pick one then all of the rest will also be protected so the waiver draft is a draft that allows for Major League Soccer teams to pick from players that have been waived. Uh, a lot of times at the end of a season, teams will kind of start to clear their squad as they sort of prepare for the offseason. Uh, contracts have ran out, and so, so these are players that were not retained. And the truth is, more often than not, there's not very many good players. As you can tell from this uh, email from one of my scouts their belief is that there's no players worthy of consideration but let's go ahead and and go through the waiver draft just to see um what you know what how it works and here is a list there's actually not even very many in this like i'm scrolling all the way through looks like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so there's twelve and um how much information you have will sort of depend on how well you've scouted. These guys, I, I have not been scouted, and so there's just not much information there. You can go through and look and see if there's any players that 
would be worthy, but most of the time, um, there's not going to be much um, talent available in the waiver draft. You kind of see, I'm just going to go through a few of the picks. As you can see, all the other MLS clubs are just passing. Um, again, there's sometimes there's a reason why guys have been waived. And um, waived is kind of a, it's an, I'll explain it a little bit. It's, it's a term that's pretty common in American sports. Um, in terms of MLS, what it means is that a club has waived a player. They've released a player. Um, giving them their free transfer would be the closest comparison to the to leagues outside of MLS. But in this case, um, they're still technically under contract with MLS. And so it gives these players a chance to get back into the league um, right away. And But in, in a waiver draft, a lot of times these are guys who went through waivers and were not good enough for anybody to make a claim. And it's here and it's gotten to my pick. And there is absolutely no one has been drafted. So most of the time you're just going to pass finish. But hey, maybe you stumble upon somebody who would be worthy of a pick. But uh, that is pretty much how the waiver draft works. So another draft in MLS that I've seen a lot of FM gamers get confused about is the reentry draft. They don't really understand what it's for. The reason that it exists is it allows experienced MLS players who have not been able to agree on a new contract with their clubs a chance to stay in the league rather than have their contract expire and and be a free transfer. They also want to try and help clubs with another opportunity to try and rebuild their squad. The draft is in the reverse order of how the teams finished during the regular season. So the teams that finished in last place will get the first choice in the reentry draft. Now for a player to be eligible for the reentry draft, they must be at least 23 years old and they must have played in the league at least three years. The reality in FM with the reentry draft is that most of these players are not very good. As you can see from this email from my chief scout, they assessed all the players involved but do not feel any of them are worthy of consideration. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to the draft so that we can see it, but the reality is that if a player was worth re-signing, they would have been re-signed in most cases. Sometimes it's you might have a good player who they just can't agree on an amount, but usually what it means is players are too old. For example, Tyrone Mears here is 36 years old. Obviously, Tyrone Mears was a, very, was a very good MLS player. Started his career in England with Manchester City, played at West Ham, Marseille. Then came to MLS, played in MLS for a few years, and had a pretty good career. But now he's 36 years old. And so whatever he was asking for, his previous team did not feel like he was worth it. And Jimmy McLaughlin is not super old. But he's also kind of a fringe level player that a team might not feel is worth the minimum salary. However, McLaughlin and Mears both would like to stay in the league. And so rather than opt out, they chose to participate in the reentry draft. Most of the time, most teams will skip this draft. Again, because the players are not usually good enough to want to keep. And I'm going to go ahead and skip to my pick. And we'll see that McLaughlin was drafted. DC United picked him up. Tyrone Mears, however, was not drafted. And so McLaughlin, obviously, you know, he's young. So DC United found a place for him. Most of the time, you're not going to find a player in this draft that's going to help you a great deal. You're not going to find, most of the time, a starter in the, in the re-entry draft. Maybe you can find a depth player. Maybe you've got a position where you're particularly thin and someone's in there that, that could at least help you for a season. But usually you're not going to get a great deal of quality in the reentry draft. Something else to note about the reentry draft is there are two stages. So McLaughlin obviously will not be in the second stage. However, Tyrone Mears will be in stage two to give teams one more chance to, uh, to, to sign him. And they'll actually also be able to offer him a new contract, perhaps lower than his 2019 contract. In the stage one uh, draft, stage one portion of the draft, you're signing players at the contract they were at last season. Stage two, you can renegotiate. So that is one slight advantage that you have if you wait till stage two. But obviously, 
the player that you see that you might want could get drafted. So if you wanted Jimmy McLaughlin, but you didn't want that contract, well, you're out of luck if you were trying to wait to the stage two draft. So that's the re-entry draft. Again, not a great place to try and rebuild your squad, but you might be able to find somebody to help you with a little depth. That concludes the video on the other drafts in MLS. If there are still some lingering questions you have that were not answered, by all means, post those in the comments, and I will see you next time.